the entire business community is reeling from Silicon Valley Bank's demise. A significant bank recently failed. Everyone is chatting about it and we have all heard about it. We must discuss it because significant events are taking place. The second worst financial failure in American history. The epicenter of venture funding for tech startups it is now essentially extinct. The US government is rushing to keep us all calm. That's because the system in place prevents everyone from freaking out at once. The, the system depends on us all to maintain our sense of security. The system breaks down if that doesn't happen. And that's what I shall be describing today. Let me now explain what took place, how this bank failed, and what it means for you and me. More importantly, let me explain how this situation shows us that our bank accounts are essentially a lie. We shall need to take a different approach in this situation. Let's talk about banks now. All that is done with credit. Credit created by the bank out of the deposits made by all of us. The banks are actually pretty nuts. We imagine a bank as a location where we can deposit our cash. Like when we hand the bank staff our money, they go place it in a huge vault where it is safe until we need it. But in fact, things are not going like that. Once you deposit money in a bank, something fairly magical happens. Actually, what they do is at the core of both our modern society and our modern economy. It is what makes many things function. I shall clarify. We'll learn a little bit more about the SVB that is in trouble. Say I deposit $20,000 in my bank. The bank only needs to hold 10% of that money, which is absurd. 10% of the actual money? That's, that is $2,000 of my $20,000. They can spend the remaining and profit from it. Normally this entails making loans to individuals and collecting interest. Therefore, $18,000 of my dollars are loaned to say a grocery store that requires a business credit to purchase pet supplies. My bank loans the money to the grocery store and adds interest to the debt. And they actually give me a small portion of the money they have accrued to express their gratitude for allowing them to use my $18,000. Therefore, the grocery store has $18,000 of my money. And I am not really aware of this because I have a vague notion that my money is hidden away in a safe. So the grocery store now purchases his pet supplies for $18,000 using the loan. And the vendor of the pet supplies takes that money and deposits it in their bank. And guess what? Their bank does the exact same thing that my bank did with my money. But now they are joined with their money, which is kind of my money. They only need to retain 10% in the vault. There is a new tax startup seeking to borrow money in order to pay salaries. Do you see what's going on here? I gave my bank $20,000 and since then that money has magically multiplied a few times to create more cash, true cash that can be used to purchase fat supplies and in terms of salary payment. This keeps happening time and again. My $20,000 continues getting borrowed, put into another bank and then borrowed again. My $20,000 has just generated say $200,000 for the industry. Strange brain models? That is the financial structure we use today. Yes, it's kind of mind-blowing and incredible. The money multiplier effect is what we refer to as this miraculous phenomenon. And it is independent on the reserve ratio that banks must maintain. In this case, 10%. You can perform this calculation by multiplying 1 by the reserve ratio which will give you the impression that your money is being multiplied. The lower the reserve percentage, 
the crazier it gets. The more money that was created in the market, if your bank only had to hold 5% of your funds, please don't come and withdraw your money at the same time because we don't truly have it. The bank would say when it was operating covertly the entire time. Just be kind. Thanks. So this is a little bit frightful, right? Like only 10% of my money is in the bank. Feels a little dangerous. I used to believe that banks were the safest location to store your money. So I should withdraw all of my funds from my bank account and hide them under my mattress so that the bank won't fiddle with them. Actually, let's refrain from doing that so that our economy will benefit from the incredible magical multiplier impact. My 10 grand becomes 100 grand. We should not panic because the economy depends on us keeping our money in the bank. Not everyone will take it out and all of a sudden. In order to help us all sleep better in at night, they guarantee that the government will make up the difference if a bank ever behaves irresponsibly with our money or if they accidentally lose it while investing. That any money we lost up to a minimum of $250,000. We shall reimburse you if you lost it. Just remember not to withdraw your money all at once. Please, the entire structure is dependent on it. Can we please relax? As long as we have no more than $250,000 in our bank account, we can relax. For the majority of individuals, this kind of works. Nobody has more than $250,000. What about companies, though? Banks are a necessity for businesses. They incur monthly costs like rent and salaries. A tech firm like Roku had $500 million in Silicon Valley Bank. And as of right now, it's unclear how much of that money will be recovered. Such businesses require for more than $250,000 to pay their expenses? This is the question. What are they feeling? We return to Silicon Valley Bank at this point. When you discuss the customers as a group of businesses, these dynamics get very strange. Okay, so Silicon Valley Bank is the bank primarily for companies. Unsurprisingly, 90% of the customers of tech companies in California had incomes above the $250,000 threshold at which the government will provide insurance. Therefore, the large portion of that money is uninsured. They simply have faith in their businesses, which is okay. The bank has been in business for 40 years and has been doing well. But what occurs next is a series of unfortunate events that cause the bank to fail. For this, let's create a list. Here is the process of a large bank like every bank they invested a sizable amount of their clients money in this instance they made a completely safe purchase by purchasing government bonds the government will pay interest on the money you invest for a set period of time such as 10 years and it will be dependent on the federal interest rate the fed raises and lowers the interest rate as you may be aware in an effort to somewhat to control the inflation the problem is that though svb bought bonds when rates were extremely low like last year or the year before they didn't get a tremendous return but it was still okay what occurs next economy anticipates a rate increase of quarter percent to assist in bringing down inflation the government starts to raise interest rates they are taking these measures to combat inflation and maintain economic stability. Interest rates are rising as a result of government action. It's all right. It indicates that individuals are currently purchasing bonds will receive a higher percentage of return. Therefore, SVB, who purchased their assets a couple of years ago when interest rates were extremely low, is now in competition with interest rates that are significantly higher. As a result, 
the value of their assets is much lower. Okay. They would lose money, they have to sell them now. But once more, it's okay. Simply hang on to your bonds until they reach full maturity schedule, at which point the government will return all of your money with your low return. Everything is fine, okay? No issue. However, this is where the perfect storm really picks up steam and begins to heat everything up. Keep in mind that SVB's clients are new businesses. Startups receive funding from venture capital firms, which they then invest SVB, and that is how SVB obtains the funds it needs to run and make investments. SVB hasn't had as much money coming in the door because startups haven't been able to raise as much cash during the current economic downturn. They begin drawing from their reserves as a result and they soon realize they need to find a means to increase their income. And it's not going to come from startups because startups are not raising. So they turn to their bonds. They think like we have a ton of our clients' money invested in these incredibly secure bonds. To get enough money in our reserves to cover all our needs with charts and other expenses, we presumably need to sell more of them, dispose of a bunch of their assets, and this is when things begin to change. Absolute nonsense. They declare that they must sell their bonds early and they are doing so. And it's true that we purchased them when the interest rate was low and now, and now the interest rate is higher. As a result, we are actually losing $2 billion by selling them. Okay, okay, banks have to cope with this sort of stuff. Well, not ideal for them, but this is when things start to spiral out of control. They publicly declare that they will be gathering capital from additional investors. They like going out looking for money. Hey, yes, we sold the bonds. We also require your investment in our business in order to continue operating successfully. Keep your cool, everyone. It's not a major issue. Just a little cash needs to be raised. Keep your cool, everyone. In reality, it's not a big deal. In reality, it's not a big deal. We are good. We are selling bonds at a loss in order to generate the money we need. Oh God, oh, it's happening. Keep your cool, everyone. Okay, this is the point at which everything comes to an end. All of these founders and venture firms, they're all talking to each other because they're all in the same community. Hey, hey folks, what's up with SVB? All of our bank, why are they doing this? Why are they why are they making an early bond sale? Is my money not safe? And as a result, terrified like a herd of bison. A stampede of extremely affluent founders and startups in Central California begin withdrawing their funds from SVB in an effort to protect themselves. They are aware that the government does not guarantee them because they have more than $250,000 in their accounts. They withdraw all of their money because because they don't believe their money is secure. I require cash. How will I survive until the bank is open? Customers with two, 42 billion on previous Wednesday alone, which was only 25% of their bank's value. As word of this travels to Wall Street, the SVB stock starts to fall. It is now even more difficult for them to go out and raise additional money to meet because the bank stock has lost 80% of its value in the past week, including 60% in just one day. All of the demands of people with drawing, drawing, drawing their money. There is a panic, or as we like to say, a run on the bank. As we quickly ran out of cash as a result of everyone trying to withdraw money at once and being reminded that the bank only holds a small portion of your money in the crunch banking system, while the remaining portion is generating new wealth throughout the industry. So, to seize control of the ship, the government intervenes. Oh, but not before the bank executives could give themselves a ton of bonuses since they work in the banking industry and tend to do things like this. 
assets such our federal authorities had intervened and taken our management of SVB's assets. It will be remembered as the second largest bank failure in history following the Washington Mutual Meltdown of 2008. Therefore, even though our bank accounts are a collection of imaginary entities, the government has played a significant part in helping us feeling secure the very beginning of the modern financial system. This is the reason that all of the government employees worked holiday overtime during the initial round of the intervention. They must begin by using simple language that Americans can trust that the financial system is secure. You you are insured because panic spreads like a contagion. You know this feeling like when you feel a sense of panic, it will just separate. A few, a few cautionary stories are also available. 9,000 banks, 9, banks collapsed during 1930s. Huge rush were occurring because there was no $250,000 insurance for any of these banks. Individuals panicked and withdrew all of their money at once, which caused the entire system to collapse. 500 banks failed in the years following the financial catastrophe of 2008. And as you may recall, there were some institutions that were so large that their failure would have been disastrous. If they were to collapse, the taxpayers would step in to save them. They received all the funds necessary to cover their requirements. It is crucial in this way. And in this case, the government went above and beyond to ensure that everyone received their money. The Biden administration took extraordinary action over the weekend to ensure that everyone who had accounts with the bank that collapsed would be able to get back all of their money regardless of the quantity. 90% of SVB's clients had over $250,000 in accounts but they were not insured. So the government was able to reimburse them for their money. Technically, they didn't pay for this with public money. We didn't know for sure, but we believe it was more like a fund that all the institutions contributed to. So, so whether or not, this is like another bailout. The bailout is a topic of intense discussion and will remain so. The main topic of discussion here is whether or not the government should intervene to save failing banks or should instead let them collapse. When banks are allowed to fail, you make them suffer the results of their management choices. But you also produce this sense of anxiety when you allow banks to fail. It suppresses easily and the nation currently experiencing economic worry. High inflation exists. There is conflict, more competition with China, and trade restrictions. No. The government sprang into action with all of its might to instill a sense of security among the populace. Among was, I suppose, the safer course of action to avoid a meltdown similar to the one in 2008. Since we are kind of giving a message to these banks that, hey, if you fail, even the kind of smaller ones, we will probably bail you out, this, which is again a good thing. I'm little worried that this may just lead to more reckless risk-taking.